So any update on the ILSAC oil specification is based on three primary areas. Fuel economy and fuel economy retention, emission system capability, and oil, oil robustness to provide performance levels required to protect engines and global markets. The need statement has been approved by AOAP and covers three areas in the following ways. In increased fuel economy throughout the oil change interval. As, as an indirect fuel economy benefit, GF6 formulations help minimize low speed pre-ignition. Enhanced oil robustness for internal combustion, con combustion engines to ensure acceptable oil performance required in regional markets and wear protection for various engine components. Also, two separate specifications distinguished by viscosity grade, GF6A and 6B, with consideration of two symbols, the starburst certification mark and, with, and a second yet to be determined mark for, for 6B. There have been two minor tweaks to what ILSAC has asked for in GF6. Fuel economy remains the primary driver for GF6, and the fuel economy performance as measured in the 6E and 6F include a fresh and used oil requirement. GF6 will need to minimize the effect of engine oil requirement, uh, engine oil on LSPI and engine cleanliness as measured in the sequence 3H and the 5GA along with the wear protection measured in the sequence 4B and the chain wear test. GS, GF6 will have two identical categories depending on viscosity grade. ILSAC GF6A will cover 0W20 oils, 0W30, 5W20, 5W30, and 10W30. ILSAC GF6B will include 0W16, but not 5W16. Any of the newer viscosity grades like 0W12 and 0W8 will, will require additional review from AOAP before being considered for the GF6B. Let's take a look at what progress has been made towards GF6. We have four or five replacement tests that have been developed and three new tests also being developed. There are still some details that need to be completed on the two tests but in most cases, the test conditions are all generally defined and all but the two tests have completed or at least started the precision matrix testing. At the conclusion of the tech demo period, the final specification and limits have to be approved by AOAP. At the recommendation of AOAP, the LPI lubricants group has to approve LPI's licensing of oils for GF6. There is an API required mandatory waiting period that ensures that all companies that want to have their oil qualified as meeting GF6 have adequate time to complete all of their testing required. This period is set at nine months currently, but the timing is dependent on the testing demand at the test laboratories. We have seen many delays over the past several years, some based on us being overly optimistic and some based on tremendous amounts of development that GF6 has required. The development of this category has been unprecedented in the number of tests that had to be developed, while at the same time the new heavy-duty specification, PC11, that you'll hear ab more about this afternoon, resulted in a severe stretch of resources for many of the companies involved. So let me summarize quickly. The development of the GF6 has involved more test development than any other undertaken in the automobile engine category process. Four replacement tests, three new tests, and remember that GF5 took more than four years to complete and there was only one test for GF5. The category development process was revised. GF6 split into two different categories. Concurrent development of the new heavy-duty category stretched resources. Four of the five current tests in GF5 will not be available in the near future. All of the test development is nearly complete. The tech demo and waiting period timings are under, under negotiation. And finally, we are expecting April 18th as the introduction date. 
I thank you for